January 15th, 2014. Now, this story, believe me, is no hoax. And this is where we need to draw our attention to serious matters that are really taking place in the world today. The story will have you squealing. It comes from uh, BBC News. Now, we were talking about this last Saturday on our live broadcast over at Tiny Chat, talking about uh, cloning and tampering with the DNA and the genome. We were talking about transhumanism. Here's a headline. I'll put the link below. China cloning on an industrial scale. All right. You hear the squeals of the pigs long before reaching a set of long buildings set in rolling hills in southern China. Feeding time produces a frenzy as the animals strain against the railings around their pens. But this is no ordinary farm run by a fast-growing company called BGI. This facility has become the world's largest center for the cloning of pigs. The technology involved is not uh, particularly novel, but... What is new is the application of mass production. The first shed contains 90 animals in two long rows. They look perfectly normal, as one would expect, but each of them is carrying cloned embryos. Many are cloned themselves. This place produces an astonishing 500 cloned pigs a year. China is exploiting science on an industrial scale. To my surprise, we're taken to see how the work is done. A room next to the pens serves as a surgery. And a sow is under anesthetic, lying on her back on an operating table. An oxygen mask is fitted over her snout, and she's breathing steadily. Blue plastic bags cover her trotters. Two technicians have inserted a fiber optic probe to locate the sow's uterus. A third retrieves a small test tube from a fridge. These are the blastocyst early stage embryos prepared in a lab. In a moment, they will be implanted. The room is not air conditioned, nor is it particularly clean. Flies buzz around the pig's head. My first thought is the operation is being conducted with an air of total routine. Even the presence of a foreign television crew seems to make little difference. The animal is comfortable, but there is no sensitivity about how we might react, let alone what animal rights uh, campaigners might make of it all. I checked the figures. The team can do two implantations a day. The success rate is about 70 to 80 percent. And there is a photograph here. Dusk is falling as we're shown into another shed where two born piglets are lying close to the mother their mothers to suckle. Heat lamps keep the room warm. Some of the animals are clones of clones. Most have been genetically modified. Do you hear me? Clones of clones and most have been genetically modified. The point of the work is to use pigs to test out new medicines for big pharma. Because they are so uh, similar genetically to humans, pigs can serve as useful models so modifying their genes to give them traits can aid that process. One batch of particularly small pigs has had a growth gene removed. They stopped growing at the age of one. Others have had their DNA tinkered with to try to make them more susceptible to Alzheimer's. Back at the company's headquarters, a line of technicians is hunched over microscopes. This is big innovation, replacing expensive machines with people. It's called handmade cloning and is designed to make everything quicker and easier. The scientists in charge, Dr. Yu Tao Du, explains the technique in a way that leaves me reeling. Are you ready for this? We can do cloning on a very large scale. She tells me 30, 50 people together doing cloning so that we can make a cloning factory here. A cloning factory, an incredible notion borrowed straight from science fiction, but here in Shenzhen is in what was an old shoe factory. This rising power is creating a new industry. And here are some photos showing the female pig removing DNA 
from unfertilized egg implant in a surrogate. Oh my goodness. My goodness, tampering with 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 life, with DNA. The scale of ambition is staggering. BGI is not the only world's largest center for cloning pigs. It's also the world's largest center for gene sequencing. In neighboring buildings, there are rows of gene sequencers, machines the size of uh, fridges operating 24 hours a day, crunching through the codes for life. To illustrate the scale of this operation, Europe's largest gene sequencing center is the Wel uh, Wellcom Trust Sanger Institute near Cambridge. It has 30 machines. BGI has 156 and has even brought an American company, even bought rather an American company that makes them. BGI's chief executive, Wang Jun, tells me how they need the technology to develop even faster and cheaper ways of reading genes. Again, a comparison for scale, a recently launched UK project seems to sequence 10,000 human genomes. BGI has ambition to sequence the genomes of a million people. Now we're not talking about pigs anymore. We're talking about people, a million people, a million animals, and a million plants. Wang Jun in, is keen to stress that all this work must be relevant to ordinary people through better health care or tastier food. Maybe this is in Obama's health care plan. The BGI canteen is used as a test bed for some of the products from the labs. Everything from groper twice the normal size to pigs to yogurt. I asked Wang Jun how he chooses what to sequence after the shock of hearing the phrase cloning factory. Out comes another bombshell. If it tastes good, you should sequence it, he tells me. You should know what's in the genes of that species. A species that tastes good is one, uh, oh my God, you know, I can't even read this anymore. Another he cites is that of industrial use, uh, raising yields, for example, or benefits of healthcare. A third category is if it looks cute, anything that looks cute, panda, polar bear, penguin, you should really sequence it, clone it. It's like, Digitalizing all the wonderful species, he explains. This is just insane. I wonder how he feels about acquiring such power to take control of nature. But he immediately contradicts me. No, we're following nature. No, you're not. There are lots of people dying from hunger and protein supplies, so we have to think about ways of dealing with that. For example, exploring the potential of rice as a species, the PGI chief counters. China is on a trajectory that will see it emerging as a giant of science. It has a robotic rover on the moon. It holds the honor of having the world's fastest supercomputer. And BGI offers a glimpse of what industrial scale could bring to the future of biology. My goodness. And what is in store for mankind, the human race? I want to share this with all of you. Now, this is a true story that we need to focus on in the end days. We're talking about tampering with the genome, transhumanism, China, cloning on an industrial scale, a cloning factory. Leave me your comments, everyone.